Greetings, everyone. I'm Pastor BJ, coming to you from Kirkmont Church in Dayton, Ohio. This week, we are celebrating the Holy Week, and today is Good Friday. The Holy Week is the time when we celebrate the final days of our Lord Jesus. It's an important time in the life of any church that loves the Lord. And Good Friday is a particularly difficult day for us because it does remind us of the day that our Lord was killed. What I thought we might do just to celebrate this moment is to think a little bit more deeply about what occurred and why it happened. Because here's the takeaway that I want us to get. If we don't properly understand what happened on Good Friday, we will never truly understand why the resurrection on Sunday was such a history-changing event. In other words, the significance of the resurrection is really only important in understanding if we get Good Friday correct. So let's pick the story up Thursday evening. Jesus had just had dinner with his disciples. It was where he instituted the Lord's Supper. And he and a couple of his close uh, disciples left to go pray. And he went to a garden called the Garden of Gethsemane. And it became very apparent to the few disciples that were with him that Jesus was distraught. He was very stressed. And he asked the disciples with him to pray, and they couldn't make it through the night. They kept falling asleep, and he kept waking them up. And he said, can you not pray with me for one hour? And, and a good question to ask at this point is, why was Jesus so concerned? Why was he so stressed out? Now, for those of us on the other side of these events, we understand what he went through. We understand why he was stressed. But his disciples were confused. They simply did not understand what he was about to face and the, the tragic suffering that was a part of the Good Friday events. But they should have known. If they had read their Bibles, they would have known that in Isaiah chapter 52 and 53, the very events that Jesus was about to encounter had been prophesied. You see, Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he was sweating drops of blood because of the anxiety and the stress that he was feeling. And that particular moment is illustrated very clearly if we look back in Isaiah chapter 52. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn with me there. Isaiah 52, beginning in verse 13, says this, See, my servant will act wisely. He will be raised and lifted up and highly exalted. Just as there were many who were appalled at him, his appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being, and his form marred beyond human likeness. So he will sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. For what they were not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand." In this particular passage of Scripture, we see two almost contradictory ideas. Isaiah is writing a poem here to try to illustrate to the Jewish nation that they had somebody to which they could look for redemption. But what he says is that this servant would be exalted, lifted up, that the kings of the world would look and see him but that it was suffering that was going to be the way in which he went through that. Now, that idea of being exalted and suffering seemed to be in contrast with each other. But it's an important lesson for us to take away that as the Scripture teaches us here, the glory of the Lord shines through suffering. If we don't understand Good Friday, we will never properly understand the Resurrection Sunday. So Jesus is in the garden. He's praying. Earlier in the day, Judas had left, had grabbed the officials, had told the Romans and the Jews where to find Jesus. And they had paid him their 30 pieces of silver. And it was about this time that a large group of Roman soldiers show up in the garden. They come looking for Jesus. Now, initially, there's a scuffle between Jesus' disciples and some of the Roman soldiers, and Jesus says, no, let's not do that. Peter, put your sword away. 
and he lets himself be arrested. The Roman soldiers confine him. They drag him like a common criminal out of the garden and back into the city. And again, these events are predicted very clearly with, with almost unimaginable clarity in Isaiah. Now, as we move to chapter 53, it says this, Who has believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain, like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised and we held him in low esteem. You see, when, when the apostles were following Jesus, they understood him to be the Messiah. They believed that he was going to be the king that saved the nation of Israel and brought the glory of Yahweh to the nations. And here, Jesus is arrested. He's just treated like a common person we almost imagine people seeing this procession proceed, almost having to look away, almost unable to grasp the indignity of the event. And the apostles could not understand it. But as Isaiah has pointed out to us so clearly here, he was a common man. He was despised, not what we imagine as a king. And that's why we see the kings of the world who are really kind of telling this story from their perspective going, who's believed us? Who has believed our message? Who would honestly believe that the king of the world, the salvation of Israel, would be treated like that? And this is what we really need to wrap our minds around. What Good Friday highlights for us is that the kingdom of God is not like the kingdom of the world. The kingdom of God is is an inverted kingdom where we care about the poor and the neglected and the weak. You see, Jesus had to go through suffering. So for us to understand Good Friday is deeply important so that by the time we get to Resurrection Sunday, we see more clearly what's going on. So now, Jesus continues on. He's arrested. He's taken back into the city and it's at this point he is treated like anything, like nothing any king has ever been treated like. They take his hands and they bind them and they put them on a post. And it's at that point that the leaders unleash two Roman soldiers upon him and they flog him and they beat him to the point where he can barely stand. His flesh is torn. The pain is almost unbearable. They take and they fashion a crown out of these thorns and they jam them onto his head and they mock him. Oh, if you're the king, show us. They get a robe and they put him on there, put him put on Jesus. They mock him, they spit on him, and they beat him. And again, the pain and the difficulty should have been understood by those who knew their Bibles. Beginning in verse 4 of Isaiah chapter 3, it says this, Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted, but he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities, the punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. It's terrifying to think that our Lord had gone through such treachery. The most innocent man that had ever lived being treated worse than a common criminal. And the question we have to ask ourselves is why? Why did our Lord have to go through this? And our scripture text tells us very clearly. He was pierced for our transgressions. 
He was crushed for our iniquities, and by his wounds we are healed. And this is why Good Friday is so hard if we pause to look at it square, to really observe why Jesus had to go through this. And the answer is, it's our fault. Jesus was not being treated the way he was treated because of something that he had done. He was being treated that way because he was taking our place. The punishment that he received is what we deserved. And this is not a message that the world wants to hear. And that's why the kings of the world are looking at this going, what? Really? Look what he is doing for us. And brothers and sisters, this is why Good Friday is so crucial for understanding the resurrection. The resurrection is not merely an opportunity for us to have a better life so that we can be happier and have a nice house off in the hills somewhere. The resurrection is a reminder to us that God has overcome what we deserve. So it's at this point then, after he was beaten and mocked, a crown of thorns placed on his head, that Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate. Now, Pontius Pilate was a very tortured soul. He was conflicted, trying to deal with his conscience, even warned by his wife, don't do this. And so he has Jesus brought to him. And, and Pontius Pilate stands over him and questions him, interrogates him, and Jesus refuses to answer. He refuses to defend himself. And Pontius Pilate is insulted. Don't you know who I am? Don't you know what I can do to you? And Jesus says, the only thing you're allowed to do to me is what God is allowing you to do to me. And brothers and sisters, that's the picture that we see. Jesus is not a victim of an injustice that was outside of his control. He was right where God wanted him to be. And again, Isaiah 53 makes that very clear. Beginning in verse 7. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of this generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. You see, he went through all of those things knowing that this was the will that God had for him. He was doing exactly what he was called to do. And the reason he was called to do it was because he had to make atonement for us. You see, this is why Good Friday is so difficult for us to think through. We were the ones that sent him there. We are the ones that caused him to have to go through that. And if we don't first understand why Good Friday happened, we will never understand the joy and the celebration of Resurrection Sunday. And so it's at this point now that Pontius Pilate washes his hands and gives him back and says, do with him what you will. And it's at this point he is nailed to the top half of a cross. He is marched out to Golgotha, the place of the skull. And between two common thieves, he is hung like a common criminal. And it's there that his final moments of agony are suffered. And shortly before he dies, he says his final word. In the Greek, it's only one word, to teleste. In English, it is it is finished. He seals the deal, and we again get this in Isaiah 53. Verse 10 says this, It was the Lord's will to crush him and to cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days. And the will of the Lord will prosper in his hands. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many. Catch those words again, brothers and sisters. 
By his knowledge, my righteous, servants, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. You see, one of the things we love to think about is that God is love. The message of God's love and God's forgiveness is great. But the Bible is also clear that God is a just God. He could not simply overlook our rebellion. He could not simply wink at our sin and pretend as if it didn't happen. It must be dealt with for God to be God. And rather than pouring out his wrath, which we so wholly deserved upon our own shoulders, he sends his son to become a human being, a glorious thing indeed, the incarnate Christ, standing in our place, dying for us. And this is why Isaiah said, he bore the sins of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Brothers and sisters, the reason that Good Friday is good is because it is finished. The events are troubling and difficult, but they are good. And that's what we should celebrate when we think about Good Friday. So that by the time Resurrection Sunday comes, we will truly understand the glory of the Lord. Let me pray for you as we close. Father in heaven, we thank you. We thank you for what Christ did for us on the cross. We thank you for the, the fact that he was willing to be obedient to you and to suffer for our sins, to take the punishment that we deserved and let us glorify your name because of that. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us.